Hi folks, and welcome back to the channel. A month or so back, I picked up this classic Victor Silver Street two-stroke alloy body lawnmower off Marketplace, and I just couldn't help myself but to purchase it. Now, I know you're probably thinking, hasn't Drew got enough miles? Well, when I came across this, I just knew that I wanted it. But interestingly, the guy was just more interested in telling me everything wrong with it. So I do recall him saying the primer cap leaks, it's got a bit of a leak and fuel tap. A spark plug boot, as you can see down here, is just all broken and, you know, mucked up. So anyway, let's have a look at this. Let's see if we can clean it up, fix it up, and restore it to its former glory. So if we will start by giving it a thorough spray down with degreaser, and then we'll give it a decent high pressure clean. So the next thing that I like to do, having done that initial degrease and pressure clean, is to get the fuel tank off will clean underneath the fuel tank itself and this top cover, as well as any other parts of the engine that we couldn't get to with that top cover on. So let's get this top cover off now. We're just using a Phillips head screwdriver, so like that. And I'm just using my impact just to make it that little bit quicker and easier. But you could just use a traditional Phillips head screwdriver. With that undone like that, you can see it's loose, so we just disconnect the fuel line. So with the Silver Street, we've got these extra couple of screws in addition to these three to also get out. So let's get them out now. Take that one there and this one here. Just take them like that. And then hopefully we can just lift that cover off. Perfect. As you can see, this engine cowling's a little bit bigger with the Silver Street. It's actually a two piece piece of plastic we've got these extra four screws to get out now so we'll get those out and then as you can see we should be able to just get that plastic out completely just like that and we'll give this all a thorough clean up you can see there's that bit of gunk in and around there now and the plastics to clean up as well so once again, we'll give it another liberal coating of degreaser. Then we'll get the high pressure cleaner in on all of these plastics on the underside and in and around that engine where we couldn't get to before to make it absolutely immaculate. All right, so that's a lot nicer to work on a clean mower now. And already you can see this mower is looking like a good mower. But something that I noticed when I was cleaning the mower was this vacuum line that runs from the carburetor to this decompressor valve kept on coming out. Now you can see that's really loose in there. And you can also see that it's got this o-ring there now i don't think that o-ring is actually meant to be there from memory so if i take that off then it actually goes in really firm but given that that o-ring is there i just want to take that decompressor valve off just to have a look because i'm not convinced that, that decompressor valve is completely right so to take a decompressor valve off they say to use a three quarter inch spanner However, the reality is that my three quarter inch spanner is actually too fat to fit in on that quite thin nut surface area. So I'm gonna use my small Kinepex pliers. You can see the thickness of those is a fair bit smaller than that spanner. Just to undo that decompressor valve. So I'll just get in there like that. And then straight away you can see I can turn that decompressor valve. These Kinepex Lies. I've had heaps of people comment, what am I using, multi grips? They're not actually multi grips. You can see that action of those jaws just makes them fantastic to use. Look them up, I'll put a link in the description. But as you can see, I was able to undo that decompressor valve quite easily with those Knipex pliers. No issues at all. Now let's get this out. I just want to check the function because it just seems strange that that O-ring was there in the first place. It was really loose with that vacuum line coming. Now straight away, I can see that this little, I don't know what to call it, poppet, is wanting to come out. And you can actually see the end is broken off of that. That should be held in. And you should be able to look in this end and see the diaphragm with a little clip on it. So that's broken. So that's probably gonna cause an issue to even start this mower. It might start, but then it won't actually run correctly. What I think I'll do is, don't actually have a spare one of these around the place, but we might just pop a spark plug in there for the moment. That'll give it really strong compression. It'll be harder to start to pull. 
but um, we should be able to get it running anyway. All right, so with that decompressor out of the way, let's thread this spark plug into where the decompressor should go, just to seal off that extra hole in the head. There we go. And then straight away, let's give that a pull. Let's see how it feels. Oh yeah, I mean, with it like that, the engine's got really strong compression. So that's showing that it's quite healthy. We've bypassed the normal decompressor, so it's just gonna be a bit harder to pull on the pull part to get it started, and we can continue. So something I like to do is to paint the exhaust muffler. So next, let's get the exhaust muffler off. And whilst we have it off, we'll actually check the condition of the piston and the rings. So undo that bit like that. And just pull it off like this. And you push that bottom clip to one side and get that muffler out of the way. And then straight away, we can look inside and we can have a look at the condition of the piston. Now, as you can see, this piston looks in really good condition. So I like to paint my mufflers with this high heat ceramic paint. You can see it goes to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a silver color and because it's high heat, it won't burn off off of that muffler. So that's what I use and just give it a quick spray, just like that. So whilst that muffler is drying, let's pop a new primer cap on. We know that that one is split in the bulb there. Got a new O-ring and I've also got a metal needle to put in because that'll make it much easier to start, stop the carburetor flooding. And whilst we're in there, we'll also give the carburetor a quick clean from the front end. Make sure we clean that front jet. So a little bit of throttle body and carburetor clean here. So to get our primer cap off, we simply use a flat screwdriver and take that screw out. Now that's also the main jet. As I said, we'll give that a bit of a quick clean with the throttle body and carburetor cleaner. Just want to spray directly in and straight away we can see we've got the fluid running all the way through that jet. So that's nice and clean. Then we want to get the front of the carburetor off that face plate. And we'll just have a bit of a spray in the front of that carburetor as well. Now importantly, we want to recycle the float. So we'll take the float off like that. We can see the needle comes out of the old face plate primer cap. And we're gonna replace that. And we've got the old O-ring there. So we'll get our new primer cap. We we'll drop our needle in, pointy side down, like that. Recycle the float. So we just wanna hook that on just like that. And then we've got to get the new O-ring on. Sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly, but just a little bit of perseverance. Just like that. Now importantly, you can see I've been holding it upside down. When we put it on, we wanna put a finger underneath so that we keep that float in position and then we just push it in just like that perfectly. There should be a little up arrow and then we get our, our main jet, which is also the screw which holds everything together to make sure we don't cross thread that. So I'm just being careful here because the whole carburetor housing is plastic. And then we get our screwdriver and screw that in. So let's also pop a new spark plug boot on at the moment as well. So get that off and I mean, this is pretty manky. Get all this insulation tape. Someone's just trying to hold the old boot together here. You can tell this is pretty ordinary. You see this one's literally falling apart and we should be able to just pull that off. It's pretty on there solid. Let's grab our pliers. We're just going to use our Knipex pliers. Let's 
There we go, just break that free like that. Just pull out like that. Now, the newest dial actually come with this spring. If you want to use that spring, what you do is you actually remove that screw or whatever's on the end there and you actually poke that spring in like that and then you slide that over with the boot. But given the length that I've got, you can see, if I bring that around there, that screw is just the right length. So I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll just go with the original style. I won't use this spring. So I'll just go with that original style, just push this boot on. Um, yep, it's coming on. And just come until we can see that screw all the way up. And then with that, all the way up like that, we should be able to just push that on. And you can feel that just click just on there nice, nice and firm, making good contact. So that's what I'm choosing. I'm choosing not to use that little spring in this case, just because we don't really have any excess length to muck around. We're going with the old style. Now, just to eliminate all possibilities, I've just popped the spark plug. That's the original spark plug. It's looking actually pretty manky, but I don't have a spare one here for the Victor Two Stroke. Just pop that out and I've got my lead that I've got made up here. All I'm doing is I'm grounding that spark plug out and I'm just gonna pull the cord. We'll just check the spark now. As you can see, that's got heaps of spark. I might just get you in a little bit closer so that you can see that spark as well. So given that it's got heaps of spark, we'll pop that original plug that came with the mower back in. Just thread that in like that. Now these are an alloy head, so you really don't need to overly tighten it, just firm like that. And then we'll pop our new boot on and we just feel it until we can feel that metal rod just click past, just like that. And it's good to go. So now that our paint's dry on our muffler, we'll just pop that back on. But before I do, something I like to do is just to pop a little bit of steel wool in the muffler. These old mufflers, you know, the internal metal has worn down a bit. And this just heaps, keeps it nice and quiet. So you just stuff as many of those steel wool balls. As you can see, I had the quite fatter style. And then we're just gonna pop our muffler back in. We kind of get the, the bottom one on like that, the bottom hook, and then get that muffler in, and then we'll get the top hook on. Now this can be a little bit fiddly. What I like to do is get that top clip in like that, get my screwdriver behind it, and then just to lever it like that, and you can see that's pulled in nice and tight. If you are having difficulty, I've got a full video which explains in detail how to get that muffler on. So let's also swap the air filter out. So you just get a screwdriver in there like that and pop the end cap off. And then I've got a new air filter to go in this one. So you can see the old one is fairly dirty versus the new one. So let's just pop that in there like that. So we know we've got a new air filter. And then pop the cap back on. Give it a thump with the hand. And that's solidly on. Okay, so we know it's got good compression. We can feel that. We've got good spark. We've given it a mini carburetor overhaul, made sure the main jet's clean, and we've got that new primer cap, the needle, pop the new air filter. I think it's time to put the fuel tank and cowling back on, and let's see if we'll start. So let's pop the engine cowling on first. Just pops in just like that. Give it a bit of a wiggle to get in position. Now this Silver Streak model had this extra piece of plastic which just dropped in like that so put the pull handle in the correct position and just fit that on like that and then we pop those four screws in that were holding that into position just going really easy on the end so as not to strip those out 
because it is only plastic after all. And then we grab our top cover and fuel tank. So first of all, we need to actually put the fuel tank back in that top cover. And then you're able to get that all star through. This one fits through really easily with this design. Then we've got the three main screws which go into the starter. Just being careful not to drive those in too hard because it is only an alloy on that starter. And then have this couple of extra screws on the side. And there was one, one just down there as well. Perfect. And then the final thing to do is to hook that fuel line up. And I'll just go and mix up some fresh 25 to one two stroke and we'll give her a try. All right, so we've got our freshly mixed two stroke. Now I've mixed that at a 25 to one ratio using good quality two stroke oil. You can get away with going down to 40 to one with the modern two stroke oils, but I always mix 25 to one. I'd rather run them a little bit too much oil That should be plenty in there to get it going. So I just put that one to one side. So turn that fuel tap to the on position. Give it a few primes. Now I can see straight away that, that O-ring hasn't sealed on that carburetor cap. So let's take that off to see what's going on there. So we'll just make sure we've got that O-ring in the correct position. Maybe it had popped off just like it's trying to do there right now before. So. We'll just get that back in there like, like that. Oh yeah, now we can feel that O-ring is, is really firm. So I'm gonna suggest that that O-ring hadn't quite sealed properly before. Get that fuel line back on. All right, so now we can turn that fuel tap on. Give it three primes so we can see that fuel's not leaking anymore. So we can go down, up, and to the start position, and let's give it a pull. So there you go folks, first pull, how's that with the Victor Silver Street two stroke? So really all we've got to do now is to get a little bit of a uh, new decompression valve. You can see it wouldn't come back to idle. I suspect that's because, you know, we don't have that vacuum line there sealed in the carburetor. So let's see if we can find one, who knows, and we'll get it cleaned up and done. All right, folks, isn't Marketplace a wonderful thing? I managed to find this carcass for free on Marketplace and it's got a good decompressor, hopefully, on it. Big shout out to Marcus if you're watching. So let's get the high pressure cleaner, get that cleaned up, get that off, and get it onto the Silver Streak. So 
So once again, use the Knipex pliers to loosen off that decompressor. And the moment of truth, looks like we've got a good decompressor. And it should be able to suck on this end and that should go in. So let's see if we can get the decompressor onto the silver streak. All right, so with that decompressor fitted, let's give it a test start. How good's that, folks? So the final thing that I like to do with my moles is to spray all of the plastics down with WD-40, because that brings them up like new. You can see the change in colour as I do this. Just absolutely fantastic. Now I've tried tyre shine and other things and people suggest different things, but I genuinely find that WD-40 with a liberal spraying just like this, just brings it up nicely for months on end. So there you go, folks. That's the silver streak all cleaned up and all fixed up. And hasn't it come up an absolute treat? I'll chuck in a before go around to where it is right now but you've got to say very happy with the outcome on this mower here and it runs absolutely beautifully now if you like the video do remember to hit that like button it's truly appreciated and comment below we love reading through all the comments and on the channel you'll find fixing up things around the home and we also maintain and service the vehicles the mercedes the audi the early ford Falcon. we've got the mazda 3 so if you're interested in any of that content do remember to hit that subscribe button until next time have a good evening